Hi, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about 3D kinematics, specifically how we do problems with position, velocity, and acceleration when we're dealing with vector-valued functions in three dimensions. So this is going to work very similar to how you've maybe done these types of problems in two dimensions. We're just upgrading it to three dimensions now. So in general, an object in motion can be described by its position, velocity, and acceleration. Of course, we could talk about other things, but these are three of the common characteristics we typically talk about with projectile motion or objects in motion. So these qualities, position, velocity, and acceleration, are related to each other via calculus. So you've probably seen this before with derivatives or antiderivatives integrals. So we're just going to review those ideas and we're gonna do it in the context of our vector valued functions. So if we start with position, we're gonna use R of T to represent this. And remember, we were using a vector valued function, so it'll have an X of T, Y of T, and Z of T as its components. Then if we differentiate this vector, so we take the derivative of it, we're getting our velocity. So our velocity is V of T, which is just R prime of T. It's the derivative of our R vector. It looks like I'm missing a little vector symbol there too. It should be there. Then we could differentiate again to get acceleration. So we use A of T to represent this. It's the derivative of my velocity vector or the second derivative of my position vector. So basically we start with a vector, we take its derivative, we get a new vector, we take its derivative, we get another new vector, and those are our position, velocity, and acceleration vectors. So we can also go the other direction. If I give you acceleration, you can integrate to tell me the velocity. So we could write the velocity vector as the antiderivative, the integral of a of t dt. Similarly, we could then integrate the velocity vector to get the position vector. So our position can be written as the integral of v of t dt. And so using these relationships, I should be able to give you some information about the position, velocity, and acceleration, and then you should be able to find me the other vectors that correspond with it. So for example, if you are given position, you can just take the first and second derivatives to find the velocity and acceleration. It'll just be vectors this time around since we're using vector valued functions. Or if you are given acceleration, integrating will find you the velocity vector. One thing that's gonna happen here when you do this is that you're going to integrate and you're gonna find a general antiderivative which has a plus C on it. So you're gonna to need to find those plus C values. And to do so, we use the initial velocity, which is the V at zero, to evaluate for T equals zero. So in this setting, you're going to be given an initial velocity and you can substitute in t equals zero to find some information to help you out. I'll show you this in my example video that comes after this one. We would do the same thing for position. You would use the initial position, r of zero, to find the c values, and then you would have your vector for the position. So this is just to emphasize that if you're doing integrating, like you're going the backward way from acceleration to velocity or from velocity to position, there's just going to be this extra step of dealing with the plus C. It's really not too bad, but it's just good to note that you're gonna to need to do a little bit of work with that. So rather than go into the examples in this video, I'm going to do that in the next one. This is just hopefully to spark your memory of how position, velocity, and acceleration are related and get you ready to do the examples in the next video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.